Welcome to the Deadly Addictions channel. Greetings, everybody. I am going to be talking about my, well, one of my favorite movies ever, John Carpenter's The Thing. I might say this is arguably the greatest science fiction horror movie ever made, but my bias is probably taking over me a little bit in that case. But people have said it, I agree, I think it is. But this is a film that came out in 1982. Perfect time to capture my imagination. I'm 11 years old, or thereabouts. And I was already a fan of the, was it 1950-something movie? Uh, a thing from another world? 1951. And... It was a black and white movie, and I was fascinated by it as a kid. The thing comes out, and it's groundbreaking. I love this movie so much. It's directed by John Carpenter, and it stars Kurt Russell and Wilfred Brimley and a score of other great actors. The, mu the, so the music, subtle again. I think John Carpenter likes to take the cues from... Movies like Jaws or his Halloween, which is another favorite of mine. So I'm a big John Carpenter fan. But at this point, I'm just amazed. I love science fiction. I love horror. You've got this great story from a short uh, short story. I think it was called Who Goes There? A novella. And they hit it on the head. They nailed down the paranoia this parasite alien now at the time it did bad and got critically slammed i would say et being out was the biggest result of it or cause of it but um in time it became cult classic and uh everybody rented it watched it just amazing special effects, groundbreaking at the time. Rob Bottin's, uh, uh, I don't know if it's his debut. Maybe he worked with somebody first. And anyway, just it holds up till today for me. In, a, in an age where you look back at special effects and you notice things, because I love the first Terminator, but I would love for somebody right now to go back and put the 3D digital Arnold taking his eye out and other clunky, badly done uh, special effects. But Terminator, the movie's so good, it doesn't matter. It's just little nitpicks. This would be the same here, but they seem to work. Whatever movie magic they use holds up in a sense and really shines. The acting is great. The chemistry between the characters the subtle music cues, the just the paranoia itself is is enough. You don't need all the bells and whistles with this big creature, and but they do it, and they go, they throw everything at the wall, and it just works on every level for me. Excitement, thrill, suspense. Uh, you know, you got your almost who done it. You don't know who's who. Uh, you could be right next to the alien creature taking over a human body fascinated me captured my imagination and still holds it to this day i watch it a couple times a year and i never get tired of it just one of my favorite movies ever i'll defend it and fight to my death with this review but looking back yeah it didn't do good in the movies it got its uh traction in rentals and became a classic called classic and i find it funny that afterwards people start recognizing what a great movie it was greatest sci-fi groundbreaking but man this was a movie that stuck with me 
from childhood and I never f- stopped watching it. I never stopped praising it, showing it to my friends. Who, if I find a friend who didn't see it, it's like, what? You didn't see the fucking thing? I mean, come on. Got to watch it. Did my Jaws. I don't think it uh, holds up critically with that. But for me personally, <laughs> there's a fondness for it that almost surpasses Jaws. In the craziness of an alien, the whole premise and setup. It just blows me away to this day. I'm going to give props to the Thing prequel. Let's call it a prequel. Came out several years ago. So in the thing from 1982, Kurt Russell and that team that's at the base, I don't give too many plot lines and spoilers and such, but for this, it's such an old movie and they are in a blizzard snowstorm. They're stuck out there and a helicopter lands and they're shooting at a dog and the captain or the leader has to shoot the guy and kill him and they go, what the fuck's going on? Where'd this guy come from? Let's go out and see what's going on. So they get in a helicopter. They check out this Norwegian base. Perhaps, or maybe that's part of the joke. Someone keeps saying it's Norwegian, but it's not. But Or they keep saying something else, and it's really Norwegian. And they go and they see this grim um, story. And there's just death and uh, heaviness in the air. They find bodies in certain positions and um, evidence in the form of, I think, I don't know if the, I guess film which documents their um, exploration or uh, findings in the ice. And they watch a video afterwards when they bring it back and they bring a block of ice back. What I like about the prequel is you see that story unfold. So the prequel shows what happened at the Norwegian base and what they do at the end of the movie is line it up with the beginning of John Carpenter's movie. So that as the movie plays out, by the time it gets to the end, all the bodies you see in the Kurt Russell movie, you see how they got there. You see what happened to form these deformed bones and bodies that they had found. You see how they got the creature out of the ice, how it burst out of the... You see everything that you see the after effects from with Kurt Russell, and they did it great. The special effects hold up. The storyline's pretty good. I really like the actress who played the lead role, the cast. I enjoyed the movie. I really liked that movie. I watch it all the time. As a matter of fact, I watch them together. And because John Carpenter's movie holds up so well, I don't mind watching the movie made in 2000, I don't know what it was, 2017, 2016. Yeah, I'm not sure. I, I, I don't want to look it up, but I'd like to know what fucking year it came out. It just works for me. They show the storyline that leads up to the John Carpenter movie, and they do it so well. And the special effects are, are great, and they keep the theme similar, but, you know, don't, you know, uh, match it exactly because the creature is, um, you know, able to adapt and whatever creatures it must have manifested over the course of traveling to earth and it just it works on all the levels for me i did hear a little bit of bad stuff about it but i don't know i guess yeah it's my bias and it's the um child in me who loves uh like it's it's good enough that it becomes great for me i watch it right before i watch john carpenter's movie it's seamless. It ends just as the Carpenter movie's beginning. They set up everything in certain ways, smart, and they don't detract from the John Carpenter movie. And I think that's a real good way to do it. 
I would recommend it actually as a really good sci-fi horror movie. I think that it holds up to the standards, if you want to say. I know it's all subjective, but it's, you know, not overblown. It's not too loud. And at certain times, it follows the theme of the John Carpenter movie really well. And going back to, like I said, to the thing from another world from the 50s, I'm already a sci-fi fan. I'm a kid watching this stuff, watching all the black and white movies. So John Carpenter's movie captures my attention and has my love for 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 eternity. I guess uh, I don't see anything ever, you know, uh, smudging the movie in my my eyes. And the sequel or a prequel, uh, you know, in that sense, is very good. And there's comic books, there's a video game. I mean, like after it's I guess bombing when it came out. It really built up traction, and it really holds up. I recommend The Thing, 1982, John Carpenter. I even recommend the prequel sequel. So I don't know what year that is. And I don't want to start typing and searching for it. So watch it. (laughs) And I think it's called The Thing. So I guess it'd be easy to check. Good movie, amazing original. Well, I can't even call the John Carpenter thing the original, right? Because it's a thing from another world, and it's based on a, a novella. Who goes there? Fun, excitement, great banter, chemistry. Just works on all the levels for me. I recommend it, and I think people would get a kick out of it. Even watching the prequel sequel that I can't remember what year it came out. So. Watch them both together. You would watch the prequel sequel first. And then you'd watch the John Carpenter's thing second. You can even watch Who Goes There. I mean, I guess you can say that's first, maybe. I could see you playing with the storyline and saying in 1951 they found it. And the Norwegians found the remnants of that. And there's some crazy shit that happens in the movie. Um, I think uh, the thing was 2011. And it looks like they're thinking about doing a remake in, well, it's supposed to be 2020, but I don't think that's what could happen. And it's going to be Blumhouse Productions. The Thing, 1982, watch it, you must. The Thing, 2011, I love it, enjoy it so much, but I could see uh, nitpicks in people's, the, you know, not being so high on it and uh, giving it its praise. But me, I love it, watch them both, stay healthy, I'll see you all next time.